All right, we're here with Taro Daniel. Uh, Taro, um, you've had a very, very good summer. Um, you're at a, near a career high ranking, and you're here in Charlottesville um, this week. Tell us about your successes in 2014. Well, um, uh, this year, I mean, I've had really good tournaments, but I also had uh, tournaments that weren't too good. But, you know, I think uh, being able to pass qualities in the US Open was a big highlight for me this year. Also, winning a couple of matches in the main draw in uh, Chile, that was another big one. And I think my level is really getting closer to people, you know, top 100. And, yeah, that's a really good sign. So, got to keep uh, working hard. Yeah, tell me about U.S. Open qualies. You, you tore through it, and then you, of course, had the misfortune of facing Miloc in the first round. Well, yeah, I mean, I was really grateful to, you know, like just pass the qualies. Uh, if I was a match point down in the first round against uh, Kuznetsov, and then I was, you know, uh, returning. The other guy was re serving for the match in the last round of the qualies, which uh, I was, like, really on the edge, and really happy to pull through all those matches uh, and you know uh, it was unfortunate I had to play a guy so high rank in the first round but I was also fortunate that I could play someone so good and you know on a huge court like Louis Armstrong and you know it was a really good experience. Now here on the Challenger Tour, there's always time to kill. You get here before the main draw starts, um, you're on your iPad. Um, what, uh, what kind of things do you do to pass the time before you play? Well, yeah, there's always music, there's always a uh, iPad, iPhone, or whatever, but I try to, if there's any event, like, um, if I can go watch a football game, or if I can go to the cinema, which I do all the time. Like, last night I went to a UVA women's volleyball game, which is, uh, you know, not the thing I would usually do, but it was pretty fun, and, you know, just find, find many different things to do, you know, and it's always fun to look for specific yeah activities now you're one of these guys who loves 70s music and you've said uh, in another interview in the past that uh, you know you think it would have been fun to to live in the 70s and maybe even play tennis at that time um, what do you think those guys did to kill the time before wi-fi before cable and everything else well i guess you know interact more with people <laughs> which i think people right now are missing a little bit you know but I think they also, I guess, used to play more music. Um, but I'm not really sure because I never really lived in that moment. So I'm actually kind of curious myself. Now, speaking of living in the moment, um, how hard is it to be patient? Uh, here you are on a trajectory to hit the top 100 next year. Um, does that ever play in your mind or do you just focus on the, the very next step in front of you? Well, you know, uh, it obviously always plays uh Unconsciously, there's always this, you know, desire to become a much higher ranked player, get there as soon as possible and everything. But I've been realizing just like last few years, you know, it doesn't really, you don't really need to rush anything, you know, just keep uh, enjoying what you're doing and uh, just keep working hard and do what you can control the best way you can. And that's the only thing you can really do. So, you know, doesn't worrying or uh, rushing doesn't really do anything for you. Now, finally, tell us about probably the sponsor of the coolest tennis gear I've seen in a long time. Tell me about that. Well, it's a brand called Hydrogen. It's an Italian brand, but uh, it's more of a fashion brand that uh, manufactures jeans and uh, they make. It's a high-end uh, boutique fashion brand. So it's pretty interesting because it makes the design different from the other brands and tennis too and. Uh, yeah, it's getting a lot of popularity in, so hopefully it keeps growing in the few years, next years. And, uh, and they've signed warriors like you, and who else? Uh, they signed Bolelli, he's kind of the main guy, and Dustin Brown also, those two are the main guys. And then got guys like Philip Bolandri, uh, Marco Cecchinato, who was an upcoming young player, and uh, myself. And I think, yeah, there's one more guy from Romania called Ungur. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, that's great. And finally, what uh, what Zeppelin album or song moves you the most? Well, I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a cliche, but Stairway to Heaven's like the probably you know, if you have to choose the best song ever in history, it's one of it for sure. But uh, as an album, I actually like the Led Zeppelin one the best. It has its most unique sound of Led Zeppelin, I think, and a bit of this dirty uh, underground sound that I actually kind of like. So yeah. 
It's great. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lightweight, so I'm a Houses of the Holy kind of guy. But they say that was the best debut album ever made by a band. So you're spot on. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I thought they, the critics weren't too good, uh, nice on them in the beginning of their careers. But uh, I'm happy that they say that. <laughs> Taro, good luck this week in Charlottesville and good luck uh, this winter. Oh, thank you very much. Thank